The history of Germany. In English, we refer to this nation as Germany. A name given to the... So, uh, I want to switch up the stream a bit, right? I want to make this channel bigger and better. So I have one hour left. I'm not going to just leave. I'm going to react. I'm going to react to random shit. I want to react to this right now. Because I realized I don't know fucking shit about my history. I know there was a mustache man. He was like bad. And then Merkel came and she was like, oh, we're shuffling us. That's all I know, kind of. So, um... Let's take a look at Germany. So first there was this, what is my take? In the beginning, like Roman Empire, there was the German tribes. These guys. Then they got bigger. And then? Like what the fuck was in Germany in the year 800, 900? Like, like, like early medieval? Like, I guess, like er, er, early... Lords and then medieval times and the, boy, I have no clue. Region by the Romans. We I have the lands no idea. East of the Rhine. Charlemagne, yeah. Oh, CK two, yeah. Charlemagne and he makes Holy Roman Empire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Germania. The history yes. of Germany is not necessarily the. If you ever go to this gate in Berlin, it smells like pee. Because everybody at night is peeing across it. Because they all want to say, oh, I peed. Uh, put up the chat, yeah. I peed on the gate. Uh, fucking degenerates. My, my beautiful gate. They're peeing on the gate all the time, man. I swear to God. History of a single nation, but of a people administering German nations. A situation which is not only one of the ancient past, but even one which the German people have faced in our modern age. This nation's history is fascinating, impressive, and profound. However, is much it? of it is overshadowed by more oh, recent events. While the events no, of the First before. and especially the Second World Wars, with Germany at the center of both, are of yeah. major historical he did, he, he like invented insurance. importance, I know we must also discuss the hundreds, in fact thousands of years of German history prior to these events to understand what Germany is uh, in the big the, picture of things. Uh, in this documentary, order. we're going to do just that. Okay. Today, here on Fire of Learning, we're going to explore the history of Germany from its earliest beginnings to the modern age. That was Wilhelm. Oh, oh, that was Wilhelm. Oh. The land we know as Germany okay. was first inhabited by modern humans around 35,000 years ago. The Germanic peoples, however, the Proto-Germanic people. I probably descend from them. The Proto-Germanic people arrived in the area nearly 3,000 years ago. They probably always walked around. <laughs> How much are these berries? <laughs> I heard they're 10 cents less. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You have to pay me five more nuts. No, no, no. You said there is a rabat on it, Aldo. Ich hab doch in der Netto-Werbung geguckt. Erzähl doch nicht. As climate change prompted migration from the origin southward from modern Scandinavia and northern Germany. It is around this time that the Germanic languages and cultures began to become distinct yeah, from all the people languages farther are kind of based on the as same. they moved, Indo they encountered German languages, and bordered so. other peoples, such as the Celts. Our European, North European language is even connected to Indian, because I, I said, right? Because they're also indo germanly influenced, of Baltic I peoples think. and Scythians. Much of what we know of these early people and their lives prior to Roman contact comes to us from archaeology, linguistic analysis, and even genetic testing. Written records of the peoples of Northern Europe in ancient times are scarce. The earliest few written accounts are fragments left from the fascinating yet mysterious man known as Pythaeus of Massalia, a Greek explorer in the 3rd century BC. More deep Dude, imagine 300 before Christ, you walk into these lands, into these foots, and you're just... Oh, what the fuck? Who are you? And they just find these these Germans with their beards and the... And he's like, oh, what's up, guys? And they don't kill him? How epic must that be to just walk around there and be like, what's up over here? Hello? Tale descriptions come to us from the Romans, who, ever expanding, inevitably came into more direct contact. Very direct contact. One of the first main interactions between the Germanic tribes and the Romans was the Cimbrian War of 113 to 101 BC. 
sparked as tribes from modern Germany, known as the Cimbri, Teutones, and Ambronis, moved further south as their land farther north had become less hospitable. They would be defeated, but this would only mark the beginning of a long, intense relationship between Rome and the German tribes. Hmm. The first to refer to the Germans as the Germani was Julius Caesar, though this classification was more about- Dude, How big was the Roman Empire, especially during that time? It's fucking insane, right, if you think about it? What Rome achieved. There probably is a lot of theses and Dr. Rooks about this, how they achieved it, but there must have been a lot of technology and discipline and new meta. Like, everybody is still uh, in fucking shorts, throwing axes, and these guys have, like, a fucking battle plan and shit. And, like, good politics and stuff. And I guess that but was just really ahead of time. An actual analysis of the peoples living in the region, who, though shared a number of similarities, were rather diverse linguistically and culturally, the shield and meta. far hmm. from unified. They, in fact, were often at war with each other. Those in Gaul were the Celts. Those across the Rhine River were, very good at were the logistics. Germans. He described them largely as barbarians. They were a people who lacked towns and cities, and who depended on primitive subsistence agriculture, often leading very difficult lives in comparison to the Romans. They followed a form of paganism which was similar to others in Western Europe at the time, specifically to Norse mythology. Yeah, it's very interesting if you look at the Norse mythology, like Thor and Odin. Um, uh, in in old, the old German regions, they had the same religion, but the names were different and the stories were a bit different. It truly shows that all religion comes from stories they told over thousands of years, right? Wotan is the real god, and then they go in the north. His name was Odin, not Wotan. And uh, like, it's, you know that, you know this, you know what human history, is pretty much like religion and culture you know this uh, game we call stille post it's like there's six people in a circle and you're like uh the apple is red uh, and then the next person i the apple is dead uh, 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 uh. the grandma is dead and then step by step everything changes and in the end it's like uh jeffrey uh, uh, jeffrey epstein didn't kill himself i thought the apple is red you know thank you reckless and that's kind of how um with an oh, emphasis on nature and the natural way. forces around them. And if you they write worshipped down, gods like such as Mani, Tu, Woden, Thuner, and Frigg. Few were likely more familiar with these gods by the days named after them. Monadog, Tu's dog, Woden's dog, Thuner's dog, Frigg-dog. They later spread to England after the fall of Rome via the Anglo-Saxons. Tacitus later added to the Roman understanding, describing the Germans as a large people with reddish hair and piercing blue eyes, they had a referring to the 50 or so Germanic tribes inhabiting the region at the time. At times, relations between the Romans and the Germans were peaceful and cooperative. Trade, intermarriage, and other interactions took place. I, I I always have these profound questions. How the fuck did intermarriage happen there? Like you're a Roman soldier and you see this German girl uh, over the river in her wild clothing and wild hair and you just feel like uh, Mixius, Lovius, this Wumius, and you just go over there? Like how did that how did that come together? At other times there was brutal I warfare. Wonder. Under Augustus Caesar, the Romans would actually attempt to expand into Germania. The area, however, Probably was a much things. harder region to enter and subdue than Gaul. The thick, forested, and marshy landscape were very foreign to the Italian Romans, and heightened their fears of the barbarian savages they thought were living within them. The lack like of roads and major towns made the logistics a nightmare for a large Roman army. As they moved eastward, the Romans would begin encroaching on the Germans further. They would build settlements, such as Colonia and Aquae Grani, which would become- Oh, they built Cologne, yeah! Oh! Oh, cities Cologne like is Cologne based on Romans, and that's cool. Or Il Chapelle. The Romans attempted to quickly subdue the Germani, yeah, placing taxes on them, confiscating their weapons, the replacing their old legal systems, and essentially taking some of them, particularly the sons of noblemen, as hostages. These boys were raised in Rome as Romans, largely with the hopes that they would return to Germania loyal to and cooperative with Rome. Yeah. In the end though, this process would come to backfire on the Romans. One of these Romanized Germans was a man named Arminius, known in German as Hermann. Arminius was taken and put into the Roman army, being the son of a Cheruscan chief. During a campaign into his homeland under Quintilius Varus, he would later defect to his native side and use his knowledge of the Roman army to ambush and defeat them. In September of 9 AD, the Roman army was ambushed by Arminius and an army of united German tribes near Calcrisa in what is remembered as the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. Everybody knows that, even I know that one. That was even in school. The battle, it was a legendary battle in Rome Total War, I remember. 
the Battle of uh, Teutoburger Wald. They Around 20,000 right? Romans were brutally decimated 20, by the Germanic 000. troops. Dude, and again and again, as I do these reaction streams, I have this fantastic mind there where I think of this romanticized, romanticized view. How must that have looked like? Thousands and thousands of men coming together in the forest, killing each other. That must be so fucking fascinating, but also very gruesome. Like our human brain can't even exp like we have watched Lord of the Rings and stuff, but what it really looked like in real life, you cannot imagine that. It must the smell. It must have smelled like iron because of the blood and shit. You must have been hot. You must have been out of breath. It must have been fucking not pretty, I guess. One of the most significant battles. Probably lots in of Roman shit history, and iron in the air, I guess. Not the most significant. For the Germans, this was a great victory. Arminius was hailed as a great warrior, and in the eyes of some, is Germany's first hero. For the Romans, I never this was them. a horrible <laughs> no, disaster. They withdrew their... Leipzig, 1830. This is where I live right now. Right here. The ...designs of the province of Magna Germania, preventing not only the Romanization of Germany, but even beyond. Arminius would continue so. to People lead, tell me perhaps shit. envisioning himself as a future king of all the Germani. But he was murdered by political rivals before such a thing as a... That looks like my fucking dad. When I would look at pictures of my dad, he looked like this. When he was a young roofer man, he was like uh, always German working nation out and shit. ...could come to fruition, and Germania returned to the disunited state it was in prior to these events. The main cause of this? The concept of Germania was a Roman invention, existing in the minds of Romans, but not in the hearts of the many different peoples living in the region. At least not yet. This would not be the end of the story of Romano-German relations, far from it in fact. In the 2nd and 3rd century AD, as Rome started showing signs of decay, the Germanic tribes began coalescing and expanding. These tribes would have a significant impact not only on Germany, and in fact not only on Europe, but the entire Roman Empire. The Goths, Vandals, Franks, Alemanni, Macromanni, Bavari, Angles, Saxons, Lombards, and so forth. The Goths would be the most troublesome to the Romans of these groups, raiding, pillaging, and destabilizing many parts of the empire. So where are the Goths from? In the fourth century, we, I always hear the Goths fucked uh, Rome up and shit. But where, where were the Goths from? Where, where exactly were they from? Like what uh, region, in a way? As the Huns began moving westward, pressure was placed on the Germanic peoples, and they too were forced to move westward Gotland. as the Huns spilled into uh, the borders of modern Germany. No, the Romans look at, look at chat. Hey, where's the Goths from? Ah, oh, Germany, you know, Gotland, Sweden, Caucasus, Goetaland, maybe from Ukraine. Sweden, I think again. Ah, no, it was the Baltic. It was an island, Tommy. It was the East. Come on, boys. You guys are the shittiest source of information since point, CNN. Lack the power to stop <clears throat> the massive waves of people crossing their borders and From settling Serbia. their territories, and instead attempted to integrate them. Much of the army, in fact, would later come to be comprised in the majority by Germanic soldiers. The intention was for these foreigners to be Romanized. In many ways, they were. In the fourth century, the I can't even read this. This means uh, uh, the year 300 to 400. The ones in Rome were Christianized and were introduced to the advances of Roman society. Around 358... Do you guys sometimes have the same thing where... It's just sometimes you feel thousands of... Look, the only reason that you live is that your dad got fucking late. Your dad had sex and he came, okay? Your dad only exists because his dad also had a little boop, 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 you know? And if you go that line back and back and back, you have descendants in the Middle Ages, in 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 Roman times, man. And do you sometimes not feel, wouldn't it be sick if you could observe your ancestors like in Assassin's Creed? Like, so who was my ancestor? One of them in like the year 400. And there's just a dude who's like, and you just, that must be so interesting. Who? Who are you descended from? What adventures did they have? What stories did they have? It's crazy, right? Our generation, they will know. In 500 years, they will see your Facebook, your Instagram. That's still probably safe somewhere. There's going to be an app, Ancestral 3000. And it's like, so uh, who was my descendant in the year 2000? They see all your TikToks and shit, and they're going to see my clips. And they're like, oh, this is who I descend from? Jesus Christ. It's going to be so awkward. It's going to be so awkward. If the human race survives another thousand years, 
we now live in the age of digitalization you can check your ancestors for hundreds of years man because there's so much information youtube videos pictures profiles it's mind-blowing translated into it's the truth, gothic man. I'm not, even try not exactly it's german insane. there was no german yet but it is an ancient relative of german and even english which perhaps you can see in this comparison of text the germanic peoples who left behind their homeland were adapting but they would not isn't that the sign of the pope they assimilate into the Roman Empire. Rather, they would replace it. Or am I done? As the Roman Empire fell, many of its successor states were formed by, or were taken over by, rulers from the Germanic tribes. These kingdoms would arise in many places, I'm even as far as North Africa. The Pope Some it. of these kingdoms would disappear. The majority would not become Germanized, but rather the German rulers assimilated into the native population. But some... some so the, the Goths were from like here. There's the Western Goths? And there's these goths. Mm. Such as the Anglo-Saxon dominance in modern England would be more permanent, having a lasting effect on the language but and- imagine you have an original helmet like this at home. How much must that be worth? That must be un- That must be so much money. That makes no sense. Why would it be in this good condition? That makes no sense. Ethnic identity of the but people someone will on probably the pay some Though money never for truly that. under Roman the rule, and migrated. outside the main conflicts caused by their kin, Germania itself was still directly impacted At least by the fall dollars, of the yeah. Roman Empire. This is an original, uh, in the coming is the centuries, from it would be United. thrown into conflict with Rome's successors. Five dollars shipping, dude. From these conflicts, however, would rise further uniformity and cohesion among the Germans. Early Though considered medieval. a dark age for many reasons, the early medieval ages were a time in which we may find the roots of modern Europe, <coughs> along with its cultures, languages, and ethnic identities. Yeah, that's kind of where it all Germany comes together. is no exception to this. While the east of the modern nation was at this time inhabited by Slavs, in the west and south, Franks, Frisians, Bavarians, Saxons, Alemanni, and Thuringians were slowly becoming more recognizably Germans. The Franks are of considerable importance. They would unify their tribe and extend beyond modern Germany. Power was beginning to center around the Franks. So German and French people are kind of the same. I mean, in the end, we're all the same, right? We all originate from like Africa. Franks and former Gaul under Clovis I of the Merovingian dynasty, who became king of the Franks in 481. Clovis began- I love pictures like this, man. I don't know why they look epic. Um, if you could have one item from history to collect, what would it be? If I could have one item from history. Wow. The shield of the real Leonidas, man. Imagine that. Do you have it like on a wall or some shit? Dude, what? To expand his domain with force into lands held by the last bastions of Romans the and other Germanic Jesus? tribes. Gives you plus one health. By 508, his empire extended throughout a large share of modern Germany, France, and the Low Countries. It was in this year that he made the decision to convert his kingdom to Catholicism, beginning large-scale conversion of the peoples formerly outside the Christian Roman Empire. When Clovis died around 512 like AD, his kingdom was divided among his four sons in accordance with Frankish tradition. This process of division of lands among the sons of the Frankish rulers would impede the unified growth of their domain and the emergence of something like a true nation-state or even a true kingdom in a more modern sense for quite some time. And in fact, much of the situation of early medieval Germany is defined by this practice, which is called partable inheritance, as opposed to- Yeah, partable, it's a great fucking thing when playing CK3, man, you build a fucking empire and then all your sons fucking blow it in the f around, bro. Dumbass fucking shit, dude. But they didn't unlock the technology yet to make uh, the, the primogeniture, right? So the older son- Primogeniture, where the firstborn child gets about everything. Sometimes these rulers would work cohesively, as they were expected to. The intention was, after all, to create separate domains of one larger kingdom, but other times saw crippling civil wars. The Franks would continue pushing into Germany, but infighting would continue and the kingdom would eventually be divided into three regions, Neustria, Austrasia, and Burgundy with modern Germany belonging mostly to Austrasia. Along with conflict between themselves, they were also constantly involved in wars with foreigners, including the westward expanding Slavs and Avars. Depending on the circumstances in the Frankish domains at the time, the Germans would rule with more or less autonomy. 
Paganism was still common in Germany itself, especially among the majority of the country outside Frankish rule, and there was yet to be a written German language apart from the aforementioned Gothic, which was being forgotten in favor of Latin. In 613, Clotar II of Neustria reunited the Franks and established what is called the Mayor of the Palace to help with administration of the kingdom, in effect a kind of prime minister. Germany would continue throughout this period at the center of a dark age. The German peoples were caught in a power struggle between many competing forces on the continent, but were still united somewhat by a common culture. Look at the leg though, jeez. Dude, I feel like I'm in school again. I want to listen, but my brain is like, oh, oh. in similar <laughs> languages. By the 8th century, the Merovingians had become effective. This is where Crusader Kings 2 starts the earliest, and a future DLC will start. Uh, a bit earlier, even. This is when uh, he united uh, the Frankish Empire to make the Holy Roman Empire. Now he's going to kill the Saxons, right? And then he makes Holy Roman Empire. A little bit before that, that's when CK2 starts. And I think CK3 will get a DLC for that, 100%. Kings. The men with the real power were the mayors of the palace. In 718, Charles Martel secured this position. Charles the Hammer, as his name meant in Old French, is remembered most famously for his victory at the battle. I love pictures like this, man. Dude, who, who, who wouldn't want a picture like this at home? What the f- Why is there a woman? She's like a ghost that brings the soul. She has a child. Like, I know for young people, it was always cringe in art class, like the art teacher. What do you see here? It's like, oh, fuck, I want to play Pokemon. But now I legit care. There's also a black guy. There's this woman. There's a side boob. What do we see here? Reminds me of the beginning of uh, Lord of the Rings, right? The first scene. Battle of Tour, where he defeated the Muslim Umayyads, preventing uh. nations such as France or even Germany from Islamic takeover. However, Charles would struggle not only with Muslims, but Germans Mary? as well. Before that battle, which took place in 732, he was involved in war against Bavarians, Saxons, like, Alemanni, like and Frisians from 718 so well, uh, to 730. Made. The Bavarians were often independent-minded and uncooperative, not something that would change anytime soon, and the Saxons were pagans who frequently raided Frankish territory. In 751, the veil was officially taken off by Martel's successor with the support of the Pope. Charles Martel's son, Pepin the Short, deposed no, the last the Merovingian king, right? Childeric III. With the end of the Merovingians right? came a new <coughs> dynasty, the Carolingians. Yeah. Pepin would rule for 10 years. All this knowledge His most major Crusader contribution, Kings. which would have a permanent if effect on Europe, uh, was the knowledge. donation of Pepin, which was essentially a land grant to the Pope, which would be known as the, the Papal beard. States. However, it would be his son who laid the foundations for much of modern Europe, including the German nation-state. And he is remembered for no less than this achievement, often called Pater Europae, the father of Europe. He is referred to as Charles the Great, Carl der Grosse. Where's Char Charlemagne's remains right now? They must be like in some cathedral in France, I guess. Charles, uh, 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 Ch Charlemagne uh, remains. It's probably some church in France. The cult shrine in Aachen contains the remains of Charlemagne. Ch what? Sick, man. Dude. Isn't that crazy, man? You're so famous that people still look at your fucking coffin thousand years later. God damn. Damn. I want to go there. Jeez. That's cool. Oh, what? Shut up. Or Charlemagne. Charles united both halves of the Frankish Empire in 771 when his brother Carloman died of natural causes. Almost immediately, he set his sights on expanding into Germany, where he would come into contact with one of his greatest foes, Saxons. the restless pagan yep. Saxons, led by rulers such as one called Vidukind, which meant forest Vidukind, child. Yeah, Back yeah, then, yeah. that implied something fierce, more like... He always tried fighting, but then they had this little tree, and the tree was like, holy, and they are like, oh, it's just a fucking tree, look, 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 and the tree is gone, man, Minecraft style, and suddenly, oh, shit, our religion is wrong. The wolf, G -G. as opposed to, you know, freedom flower child. In 770, Two, Charlemagne invaded Saxony, subjugating one of the many tribes and desecrating pagan religious monuments, such as a hollow tree known as Irmund Sul, which the Saxons believed held up the sky. Charlemagne did not stay long, turning his attention to Italy, specifically toward the troublesome Lombards, descendants of German invaders with a name meaning Longbeards, who were agitating the Pope and Italy. 
Nevertheless, things weren't quite so finished in Saxony. In fact, war would continue for 30 years, until 804. The primary reason for this was paganism, but also the fractured structure of Saxon society. They were not unified and the various groups acted independently and had to be subdued individually. When Charlemagne was distracted by other conflicts especially, it tended to revolt, attacking Frankish soldiers, priests, and churches. The Franks would respond bitterly. In one incident, in Verdun in 782, Charlemagne ordered that 4,500 people be beheaded for a rebellion. Even by- I've, I've heard that, man. Thank you, Roboman. What's up? Did he- that, that just- Once again, it's, I, I, I can't stop thinking about what must that have looked like. Every time I think about historic events, whether they're gruesome, bad, or, or great and, and positive, I always wonder. To imagine you beheading 4,500 people, man. ISIS is dreaming of that shit, these little pussies, man. That's insane. That's insane, bro. Imagine that that day, that, that sight. Fuck, man. By his contemporaries, this act was seen as excessive that is, like, brutality. Unimaginable. As he subdued the Saxons, he and his missionaries enforced Christianity on them harshly. The penalty for refusing baptism was death. In 785, Vidukin surrendered and willingly agreed to be baptized. The other Saxons fought on. Charlemagne continued to expand eastward, into other parts of Germany as well, and even beyond. In 788, he went to war with the Bavarians. He would then expand further eastward from there, fighting the Avars and Slavs. After years of conquests and conversions, That's on Christmas Empire, Day man. in Jesus. 800 AD, Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of the Romans by Pope Leo III. This was the beginning of something that would outlive him for a little over a thousand years. It was not just a pompous title. As time went on, some historians would consider Charlemagne to be the first Holy Roman Emperor. That is not agreed upon, some consider Otto I, whom we will talk about soon, to be the first true ruler a century later, Country, because Charlemagne man. was not actually the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire in the sense that it would later take. The term holy would not be added until a few hundred years later, too, but the Tommy? intention was for Charlemagne's empire to be viewed as the reincarnation of Rome, although admittedly he and his subjects tended to prefer their Frankish identity. As time goes on, the Holy Roman Empire would not really live up. Isn't it crazy though? For, for us, this is so far away. These people in the year, what is it, 800? For them, the Roman Empire must have been so far away. It's, it blows our mind, right? To us, Roman Empire, uh, Holy Roman Empire, Charlemagne, it's, it's much closer. It's like, oh. I read a thing yesterday. I don't know if it's true though. Cleopatra is closer to the iPhone than to the building of the pyramids. Isn't that fucking. Oh, it's true though, right? The pyramid, yeah, yeah, she will, yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? Is that, or is it, no, that's, it's true. Isn't that insane? Isn't that fucking insane, man? Dude, this shit makes my head hurt, man, I swear to God. Shows you how insignificant we all are, man. Our little mini poops life, man, that no one cares about. To any of its names. Like all these people are fucking dead, no one thinks about them anymore. As we shall see. The intention of be Pope Leo day. III was to be the spiritual leader of the Christian world and Isn't Charlemagne the was the secular, to, uh, to and the for the emperor and pope to work in tandem, ruling over a awful. new Rome. The intended mutually beneficial relationship here, however, would eventually become a source of conflict. This event also caused dispute with the Byzantines, and not for the last time, who were fairly offended by the notion of Charlemagne calling himself Emperor of Rome when they <laughs> considered themselves joke. the Romans. Remember, of course, that the Roman Empire only fell in the West. The East, or the Byzantines, had continued, and were still standing strong. Pope Leo wasn't concerned by this. The Byzantine head of state at the time was a woman, so he felt that the title was vacant. The tension between East and People West would that not the quickly empire was the empire. In fact, yeah. it would carry on until the death of Byzantium itself. Following his coronation, but it wasn't that, Charlemagne... I think people always don't give Byzantium that Roman character because the religion has changed, right? They became Christians. It wasn't like this, what you have in your mind, the legionnaire who was praying to Mars and Charlemagne shit. would continue to expand his domain. In total, his empire would encompass almost all of Western and Central Europe and big. even beyond. Charlemagne was not but then CK3 comes around. only a man of the sword, however. He oversaw a number of intellectual achievements that have led to his reign being referred to as the Carolingian Renaissance. 
Charlemagne died in 814 AD. The empire he constructed formed the basis for a rebirth of Europe. Like you can't actually see this in Aachen. Bro, dude, I've always been, I, I know I'm not that good with history than a lot of you guys, but every time me and Lisa had like a trip and we went to church, I'm always impressed by the artifacts there and stuff. If you ever want to see historical artifacts, you just go to a church in Europe, right? Any church, man, there's so much gold and old stuff and shit like that, man. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, crazy. My profile picture on WhatsApp is me and Lisa in front of... Um, of an old artifact. I forgot what it is, though. It's the tomb of someone. Can you see this? Wait. Ah, you can't really see him. Who cares? It's some tomb. No one cares. Okay, now now I made it too long. You see that? It's me and her. And there's a... It's not focusing. I tried. I tried. Fuck off. There was like a tomb of a holy guy. He I don't had know. intended. And you can go to the church of Stralsund and there is a plate on the wall of every single priest or whoever was um, the boss of this church. And then like uh, 11 something or 14 something, there was a guy, the first Kettlehot, which my family name is Christian Kettlehot, the first reformist. Nah, it was like 1500. I don't know. One of the best friends of Martin Luther. He was uh, one of the first there. To divide his kingdom yeah, cares, up among right? his sons, a practice so. And I always feel like just one more thing. And every time you go into a church, right, you go in there, and everything is golden and big and bomb. And I uh, and I look at Lisa. Lisa, didn't you tell me Jesus was like you should be humble and no money and Mammon is the devil? I never understood that with Christians, man. Like Jesus, he I saw it in the movie. He's like, oh, money is bad, bro. Don't pray to the Mammon. Be humble. And then you look at the christian church man it's like oh i need a thirty thousand dollar bathtub bro firmly so rooted awkward. in tradition that not even he would break it but only one louis or ludwig would outlive him while it may seem as though having one heir you think would hold the empire that? together in louis the pious right? would dust, not rule as strongly as his father had and would often have to struggle to keep the empire together against an array of enemies That's assembling outside happened. his yeah. empire and even against his own sons Louis was not a harsh ruler, but he was, quite simply, not the right man for the times. In fact, he is said to have wanted to have been a priest what do you rather what do you than a member. Want to make he strong. died in 840 AD dirt, after a series gold, of external and internal wars. He had tried to leave the empire to his eldest son to prevent the collapse of Christian, Christian Europe, Kettler, but his other page, son... Why not? He was ugly as hell though. Christian Kettlehot. The first guy ever, I think, with my family name. I, I'm not this descendant though. I mean, look, I, I, come on. That's not me. <laughs> what the fuck happened there, bro? Jesus. Bro, what the fuck? Ah, uh? <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. I'm, I'm here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes all sense. Rebelled successfully against yeah. this decision. Yeah. Two years following the Battle sort of Fontenoy of in 841, the, the kingdom mm. was divided into three. Yeah, and then the CK3 happened, all the sons take over. Charles the Bald would rule the western portion, Lothar the lands in the center, sure, and Ludwig Chad. the lands in the east, specifically the regions east of the Rhine and north of Italy, Bavaria, Franconia, Saxony, and Swabia. This event is considered a very significant milestone yeah, very in German big. history. East and West... Isn't it crazy how the entire world history changed because a guy came, like Charlemagne, cooming into his wife, made a child, which then would inherit one of his titles, changing the world forever? Frankia, now with Dude, different can't make languages history, and Chad. cultures, would Don't be basically it. permanently severed. And, and we're on a path Nobody to develop into history. separate nations. France and Germany. Ludwig would later receive the old Roman title Germanicus, which meant conqueror of the Germans. Ludwig is promptly known as Louis the German, or Ludwig der Deutsche in German, or Ludwig the Mites in Czech. I think I once read, I don't know if I'm lying though, that's the first time in history the word Deutsche, uh, German, uh, would have been used. I think, I think I read At that At this once. time, as the German identity was in a very important stage of coming together, the peoples of Europe disagreed on what exactly to call this variety of people with similar cultures and languages. This issue was never really resolved, and today there remains a variety of names for Germany in different languages which are seemingly unrelated. This Treaty of Verdun, while it provided stability, would not end the conflict between the three brothers permanently, and fighting would continue on and off. 
In fact, after Charlemagne, and now I'm starting Germany's to be a bit history... lost. I, I knew all this, but what comes now? Now happens. Uh... I have no the idea. next few centuries would be marked by constant conflict. Germany, or East Francia, would be surrounded by rivals. At various times, fighting Norse Vikings, the Slavs, which would later include groups such as the Moravians and Polish, the Magyars, now on Ludwig's doorstep, the Northern Italians, the Saracens, or Muslims, the Byzantines, and the West Franks, or later the French, to Good. name the main ones. Arguably, Germany East was Francia's always all biggest about enemy, though, everyone, man. was itself. Divisions among family would constantly fracture and divide the land, threatening its very existence for centuries. It was not long before the kingdom of Middle Frankia would be broken apart. It was the least stable of the three, and had even less cohesion than that of early France and early Germany, which, though facing division, had at least similar languages and ethnic groups. Many different ones were Looks forming like in an awkwardly <laughs> formed territory now <laughs> encompassing the Netherlands down to Italy. The Excuse me, my name is Amika. The, 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 the Magyars were much bigger than that. Shit video, dislike. How many people fought like that? 1,470 people thought the Magyar wasn't big enough the on territory the territory of Lorraine, <laughs> Unbelievable however, YouTube between video. modern France and <laughs> Germany, is a corruption of Lotharingia. And this region still carries the name of Lothar, which is more obvious in the modern German name Lothringen. Ludwig and Charles eventually yeah, seized that Lorraine used to be German and divided play. it in the Treaty of Meersen. This would not solve the dispute over the region, though. In fact, it would be a constant cause of conflict for over this a millennium. Is all in CK2 Ludwig right the now, German right? died in 876, and as you probably expect at this point, his kingdom was divided among his sons: Ludwig the Younger, Carloman, and Karl. Who would, sometime later, be known as Karl der Dicke, or in English, <laughs> Karl the Fat, Charles the Fat <laughs> who actually briefly reunited Charlemagne's empire and became Holy Roman Emperor. Not so much because he was a great conqueror, but because every other heir in Germany and France had. I never died. heard that. He accidentally became emperor because everybody fucking died. Karl would be the last to rule over a united Frankish Empire. In the 860s, the Magyars had finally reached East Francia, raiding the territory mercilessly and centering their power not far away. Yeah, but why is he cutting his fucking arm off? What the fuck's wrong with him? In the modern nation of Hungary, Jeez, he's which cursing the Magyars us. would later be responsible for. I told you, man, the Slavs always fuck the Germans, man. They shoot that fucking crown prince and shit, we all get fucked, dude. Founding. Much of Karl's reign Look was spent the dealing with them, under? as well as Vikings, blood whose raids by now reached the city of Aachen, in which Charlemagne had centered much of his empire and where his palace was built, as well as Paris and the Rhineland. Bro, you imagine, imagine you're like a citizen and you look uh, on the horizon and you see all these ships full of men coming, man. Things were not going <sighs> well for Karl. His rule was brief. His lifelong struggle with sickness and epilepsy made ruling over an uncooperative empire Man, difficult, and he was deposed by his nephew Arnulf in 887. Arnulf would not be able to claim the entire kingdom, however, and the Frankish empire the Turks? No, apart. Turks don't, don't even need anything yet. Permanent. I learned it from CK2, the Turks is like, there's like a tribe in the east of today? Turkey, and that tribe uh, under there, there was a name. Uh, thank you. His name was like, I don't know, Ataturk the first, I don't know. And he went to minor Asia and took it all over and then the sort of Turks are made or some the shit. The divides right? between the two halves were too yeah, great to seal by Hungarians. Yeah, Arnold yeah, yeah. merely retained the German Sel area Ju of the country, Sel East Francia. Importantly, Arnulf did not merely Sel take the throne. He was elected by the nobility to be king. The concept of as a as a Turkish person, you could actually have a lot of fun with paradox games. You literally play the first Seljuk in CK two, and and invade Turkey, and then you switch to U four, right? And you can really build Turkey and stuff. If I was Turkish, man, I would have big fun in, like in this game. Like leaders in Germany dated back to. Then you play U four and you coop yourself and destroy your entire economy. Ancient times, and as we shall see, <clears throat> did not disappear anytime soon. Arnulf's reign would be marked by unsuccessful wars with the That's Slavs, why we love Paradox Vikings, and all Moravians, makes sense now. and Magyars. All makes sense now. He died in 899 and was succeeded by his six-year-old son, Ludwig the Child, who would only live to the age of 20. Throughout Ludwig's reign, every corner of Germany was ravaged by the Magyar horsemen. Furthermore, the dukes of the various regions that or picture, duchies of East cool Frankia look, asserted more independence, threatening to break the kingdom apart. Ludwig the Child died in the year 911 as the last Carolingian king. 
The Germans had to focus on their own affairs and elected a king from outside the Carolingian line rather than respect Charles the Simple, King of France's claim to the throne. One such affair was the Magyars, who were a more major threat to the Germans than the Vikings, which France was focused on. Conrad, Duke of Thuringia, was elected to be their king. The election of rulers was resurfacing as a common trend, and it is here where we begin to see the complex political structure of what would be called the Holy Roman Empire arise, although Conrad did not receive the title of Emperor I don't Rome. even understand the that HRE and EU format, don't even try this in this Becoming myth. essentially a reward the Pope gave out to any ruler who would help him. Conrad, though king in name, did not have much authority over the dukes who made him king, and he would struggle this make to you assert his authority throughout his reign, I mean, often too, not fighting free, both right? his subjects and this foreigners makes you want to play. He was more Fuck. like a oh, grand like duke to... than king. There's not enough time on this stream. I would like to have another CK2 campaign then. This power struggle between the monarch and nobles of the semi-autonomous states that put him there Thank you, Riley, would be man. another feature which would mark the Holy Roman Empire's existence in the long run. Conrad would actually be severely wounded fighting the rebellious Bavarians, it, and uh, on his deathbed he proposed to his brother that Heinrich, the tomorrow. Duke of Saxony, should be the next king. Heinrich going, was guys. an enemy of Conrad, but Conrad knew he was the man that could hold the nation together. Conrad died in 918, and the nobles appeared to agree with him, electing Heinrich as their next king a few months later. Heinrich, known as Heinrich der Vogler, or Henry the Fowler after his hobby <laughs> falconry, <laughs> was the first native German to be it's king German. of Germany, beginning <clears throat> the Saxon. Call the bolt. The threat of the Magyars was an immediate concern of Heinrich upon his rise to power. Though initially facing defeat against them, he eventually had a stroke of luck, defeating the Magyars and taking the son of their leader prisoner. In exchange for the Magyar prince's release, he demanded ten years of peace. The brief ceasefire allowed Heinrich the opportunity to continue war with the Slavs, train his infantry, and build fortifications around his domain. In 932, when the Magyars returned, he defeated Heinrich them Himmler at the Battle thought of Riata, like was dealing a major of this guy. blow to them. Heinrich was a I great like ruler in the but he never consolidated power politically in a form of absolute rule either. Germany persisted as a kind of confederation of semi-autonomous duchies over which he had limited power. Nevertheless, he had the strengthened and protected the, half the nation over. When is Hitler coming? He died 936 AD. His son was elected that year. Importantly, Heinrich did not divide his domain among his sons, despite an opportunity to do so. The problem so. with videos like this is, they're really good, but I'm gonna forget all this in the next days. There was a Charlemagne, and there was like Germain, so, there was tribes and shit, but like Heinrich and shit, what? His son, Otto, all gone would reign for nearly 40 years. In that time, his achievements in building the German nation and the Holy... That guy looks like someone. Fuck, I have a... It's in my brain. There's a guy who looks like this. Uh, I can't find it. I can't. Roman Empire would earn him the title the Great. Part three, Holy Romanum Empire. Otto was ambitious and bold, essentially viewing himself as no less than the successor of Charlemagne. His reign was marked, naturally, early on by conflict. I want to legit learn something. Uh, can someone in the ex in chat explain why the golden apple was always a symbol? What did it represent, the golden apple? What was what was it about? With his younger brother and the other German nobles. And furthermore, he was involved in the regular wars with Slavs, something? Vikings, and French. But why? The However, was as bad time there. went on, Otto actually began it's to break world? out of this continuous it cycle that the caused world. this disorder. He def Hä? How would that symbolize the world? They didn't know the world as a uh, sphere yet. They What? What bullshit? It's supposed to be the world. How did they know the world is round? Wasn't that Galileo Galilei years later and shit? Whoa! It's the holy hand grenade? They knew since the Greeks? The 
Greeks found out the world was round. So why did rivals and then began to try to Catholic religion the structure of be the like, German oh, we're the center of the universe. By centering power on the monarchy. That, I'm an idiot here, right? There's a difference between the world is flat and round, and there's a difference between the, the we are the center. And actually, the sun is the center. Okay, I get that. Dude, imagine being a flat earther, and these fuckers a thousand years ago had a fucking world would replace hand. rebellious Monkey. dukes and nobles with those loyal to him, commonly relatives, and intentionally overrule the authorities of all the others, signifying that loyalty. Imagine, I know it's unimaginable. I I think about this sometimes. Imagine you are a human being on Earth and you don't know, you don't know what the universe is, you don't really know what bad. the sun is, Hello. you don't know chemistry, you don't know that the world is round, you don't know what the Milky Way is, you don't know that there's an america you don't know that there's an asia imagine that it's unimaginable right not knowing and i think that you and me right now we are the same but we don't know what we don't know in a thousand years the little monkey streamer is gonna sit here beep, 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 bathtub we use my tits he's gonna be like man imagine in the year 2021 they believe there's only one universe you know like, i'm not even kidding i'm serious here we don't know what we don't know, like they didn't know. Think about that, man. He too, Think and about cooperation that. with the monarch was the way forward. He ruled from horseback, often touring his domain for half the year. He would endeavor to control the church and Crazy. use it as a means to strengthen his rule. By the 950s, you can't know what you don't he had know, settled yeah. many of his domestic like troubles and, and began to expand outward. <laughs> One of his prime interests was Stupid. Italy, where Idiot. the widowed queen of northern Italy, Adelaide, called to Otto for help after Berengar II had usurped her husband's throne. Otto crossed the Alps in 951, where he took the city of Pavia. He would, in turn, marry Adelaide, his second wife. This second... Well, he didn't look so happy about that. ...second marriage angered Otto. It's like you're on Tinder, man, and you 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 fucking uh, connect with this Tinder girl, and you go to the first date, and she's like, "Hi," and you're like, "Ah, fuck." Otto's son from his first wife, <laughs> ah, Leodolf, especially That's not like when the she features, bore him man. a son, who threatened what Leodolf's succession. Outraged, he would rebel against his father in 953 alongside other frustrated nobles. The rebellion spiraled out of control, and the situation was exacerbated when the Magyars moved into Bavaria. Leodolf would later become cooperative with the Magyars. It was not long before the situation began to threaten Otto's reign itself. But it would be abruptly Truly ended interesting in how long human history is shown partially by a because so many nobles of felt many, that many an alliance later. with the Magyars was excessive treachery. Otto, at times a oh, very merciful ruler, guys. forgave his son for all his crimes. With the domestic situation finally stable, Otto now turned this his video attention shows me though, to the I need to watch Magyars. smaller videos. In the spring of 955, just war with the Magyars would brother. resume, but Otto would defeat them on multiple occasions throughout the year. On August 10th, the two sides were squaring up for a major battle, the Battle of Lechfeld, near Augsburg in Bavaria. Otto had a force of around 8,000 men obtained from across Germany and Bohemia. The Magyars likely had a force around twice the size of this. Oui. Despite this, Otto had some favorable factors. The battle was to take place on a narrow plain between two rivers. The Magyars were not as accustomed to fighting pitched battles. They were horse archers who preferred hit-and-run tactics. Despite the swarm of arrows that rained down on the German troops, they were no well, match like that for picture, Otto's man. cavalry. It's like the Warhammer. This is real life, man. That looks like a video game. Some fucking emperor dude with plus 20 stats, man. Predecessor that looks so of the medieval sick. knight. They destroyed really into this the Magyars stuff. in this battle, dealing a fatal Fuck. blow to them. I wouldn't mind Following having a picture this, like this on my the wall. The Magyars gave up Fuck. on the raiding of Western Europe altogether. That same year, Otto would lead his forces to There's victory against video? the invading oh, Slavs no, and pushed off. further into their territory. His victories over no, the no, foreign no, no, no. pagan invaders led to many Thank viewing you. him Thank as you. the savior of Christendom. Things were beginning to go smoothly for him when, in 958, Trouble in Italy returned with Berengar. Otto intervened Bogart, and- thousand. This is a wrong video. I'm sorry, I have to call it here. It's actually, it's 8 p.m. I promised these are the chill for, and I want to do, uh, I'm still new to this uh, reaction stuff and I need smaller stuff, not that long. That's a bit too crazy, man. But man, very interesting, but just a bit uh, long, long breathy, long, long breathly. And I have to call it here, man.